Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lepo pozdravljeni na današnji izjavi, ki smo jo pripravili od zaključka konference načeljnika štabo generalnih štabov vojske Srednje Evrope. Izjavi boste podala general major dr. Andrej Osterman, načeljnik generalnih štaba slovenske vojske in general kurtice Skarparoti, povenik sil ameriške vojske v Evropi. Spoštovani načeljnik generalnih štaba, izvolite. Spoštovani general Skarparoti, predstavniki v medijev, lepo pozdravljeni. Slovenska vojska letos prvič gosti konferenco načelnikov vojsk iz sosrednje Evrope, ki so se letos dodržili kolegi sednjih držav – Bolgarije, Češke, Hrvaške, Mađarske, Polske, Romunije in seveda tudi povelniki nacionalnih gard. Posebno počaščen pa sem, kjer je med nami tudi generalska paroti, vrhovni povelnik zavezniških sil v Evropi in povelnik ameriških sil v Evropi, ki je tokrat na prvem obisku v Sloveniji. Na konference sem kolegam predstavil poglede na aktualne varnostne izzive in zmogljivosti slovenske vojske. Ob tej priložnosti pa sem udeležen se tudi se znanil z našo novo zmogljivosto, to je šola za osmrljevalce Združenjega ognja in jih povabil tudi k sodelovanju, da se nam priključajo še v prihodnje. Obrobu konference se je omem tudi priložnost generalska parotija se znaniti za sedanjem sodelovanjem slovenske vojske v mednarnih operacijah in misijah, opravila sva tudi pregled do sedanjega dobrega sodelovanja in privirila možnosti prevodnega delovanja in sodelovanja slovenske vojske s povedstvom ameriške vojske Evropi, ki je izredno dobro in je tudi dogodkov je vedno več. Verjamem, da so kolegi kljub intenzivnemu delu našli tudi čas za ogled bleda za okolico in da bodo vnesli tudi v tise domov in se vrnili tudi še kdaj v Slovenijo kot turisti. Hvala, spoštovani mediji. Hvala lepa. Ok, 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 I thank you for the chance today to discuss the relationships we enjoy among U.S. European Command, our NATO allies and partners, and especially our Slovenian hosts. I greatly appreciate the contributions of your country and your military. I know that our many service members of whom you've hosted in the past appreciate the chance to train here, especially in recent exercise immediate response during which our forces came together to train at a battalion level earlier this month. Uh, thank you, General Andre Osterman. Andre, thank you for the warm welcome this week and for co-hosting this conference. And thanks to the eight European nations who participated as well. It's always important when we get our Chiefs of Defense and these nations together. We've had an honest and dynamic discussion regarding the issues and the challenges that we face here in Europe. And during the conference, we discussed ways to strengthen the alliance, improving freedom of movement of our military forces in Europe, uh, Russian aggression and malign influence, and countering transnational threats, particularly the migrant crisis, which has greatly impacted many of the countries represented uh, in this conference, uh, and in particular, Slovenia as well. As a group, we've improved our understanding of each other's issues collectively and individually. We exchanged views on the future outlook of the regional cooperation, and we discussed the value of state partnership program and all of its participants, as well as highlighted the value of a strong and professional enlisted corps and non-commissioned officer corps, which is significant interest to me. This is one area that I feel we can leverage to improve the interoperability and readiness of the alliance. There is no more important time than now for us to come together, and I reemphasize my charge for the continued dialogue of all the nations represented here today. Finally, I'd like to again express my gratitude to you, General Osterman, Andre, and your staff for hosting us. It was an excellent conference, and the support was, was just couldn't be better. Please know that the U.S. European Command is committed to strengthening the bonds between the United States and Slovenia and that we remain fully committed to the collective defense of our NATO allies. Again, I thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity today, and, and I'm prepared for your questions. Thank you. 
uh, you mentioned Russia-Russia, and I would like to ask you, what kind of proof do we have that Russia is giving weapons to the separatists in Ukraine? And um, what is the final goal of NATO involvement in the Ukrainian war crisis? What is your comment on that? Well, first of all, we, we know that, um, that the separatists are actually a combined Russian separatist force. They provide weapons, training, and advisors in eastern Ukraine. And we must remember that this is a violation of international law, as well as the annexation of Crimea. Uh, as a goal, uh, I think that our nation and those working on this uh, have been very clear that uh, Russia must uh, end its occupation of, of uh, eastern Ukraine and must end its annexation of Crimea. We call on Russia to meet their commitments of the Minsk Agreement to withdraw their forces, uh, to support the unfettered um, uh, ability of the OSCE uh, monitoring teams to do their job uh, within uh, Ukraine as well. Well, we, the, the final result, you know, remains to be seen. It'll be, I think, largely up to Russia and how much they support this. But obviously, um, we support the sovereignty of Ukraine. And it should be uh, a meeting of the Minsk agreements as it was established uh, originally. And again, we call on Russia to help us see uh, or realize those goals. Okay, so, uh, General, with your uh, vast military experience, uh, five years ago, could you predict such a shift in geopolitics uh, and removal of the old tensions and that environment? Well, I'd say this. I, I, uh, I think if you look at how most of our leadership has looked into the future, um, that's one of the things that we almost always get wrong. Um, it's very hard to be accurate in that prediction. So I would tell you that it's not unusual throughout history that we haven't been uh, exactly right or prepared for what occurs. But if you look at the shift that has occurred in Europe over the last few years, it's significant. Um, and we have to have, in the military perspective, we have to have a different mindset because of that shift. We have to look at a different posture of our forces. We have to ensure that we have a different readiness of our force for responsiveness. And we need also the support of the, the different countries, uh, both from a political and uh, from an administrative uh, position, in order to help our military deter Russia and deal with the other threats, the challenges that, that Europe uh, experiences today, in particular, the radical threat uh, being terrorists, as well as this refugee uh, challenge that we have. So significant change, and it, it requires us also to change our military posture to deal with those problems. Thank you, and finally question. Uh, are the allies prepared for uh, totally different uh, geostrategic challenges? And uh, by allies, I mainly think about Slovenia. Uh, is our military in shape with which mm -hmm. we can face contemporary threats? Well, first, I would just tell you that, that um, Slovenia has a fine military that's contributed uh, to the shift that I'm talking about, that's contributed to the things that we're doing as an alliance and as partners to counter the threats. Um, you know, they have uh, contributed, although a small country, they've contributed to uh, our efforts in Afghanistan, if in Iraq, the counter ISIL, um, uh, you know, activities that we've undertaken, as well as in Kosovo. And our K-4 force there is very important to us as well. So I applaud Slovenia for that. <clears throat> in terms of a general outlook uh, for the alliance and the nations in Europe, uh, we're all in the, ma in the, you know, in the, in the center of this shift. I think that um, we've responded well. Warsaw was a, was a significant summit where we, after two years, uh, made uh, a statement of solidarity uh, about, um, you know, the defense of Europe, and laid down uh, new force requirements to ensure that we can deter Russia and meet. Uh, the threats that we see here in, in Europe. So are we where we need to be? No, but we are on the path, and we'll have to stay focused and continue to work to get to where we need to be to ensure the defense of Europe. Thank you. Alipa. 
Thank you, General. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.